Yeah, now we are looking at techniques uh, of fostering change uh, in business and we know the meaning of techniques. In other words, change is important in a business. And because it is important, we need it. Because if we don't change here and there, we may not realize progress in the, in the business. That's why there is coping. And that's why we call it coping with change. And coping means getting knowledge from someone who is above you, could be above you. That is why we call coping. Even in class, when they talk of coping, it means you are getting assistance from someone who is a little bit above you. And that's why our topic is coping with change. And that's why we say the change is inevitable. We may not do without it. Then, because it is important, we need to understand the techniques of fostering, improving on it, of bringing it on board, so that we can learn from other businesses, other producers, other companies, other organizations. So what are these techniques? Hmm? What are these techniques? Which technique can we come up with to ensure that people have, have uh, accepted that change is important? It's like when you hear, when, when we go back in, in, in a little bit in the taxation, and there is what we call tax compliance and non-tax compliance, where people fail to pay the amount of tax left on to them. And then the government is asking, what should we do to encourage people? Which techniques can we come, which encouragement can we come up with to ensure that people have become tax compliant, that the rewarding tax compliant people. That is some person who is paying his or her tax imposed without disturbances should be rewarded. That's why one of the techniques here is rewarding success and appreciating what someone has done. Meaning if someone changes to the best and you are managing an organization and you have brought a better change, like when you are designing logos of companies, you are changing the shapes of businesses, sorry, shapes of products, shapes of, shapes of uh, packaging materials, like bottles, and you see customers have now demanded because of such a kind of thing, people have to be appreciated. So that even those ones who haven't gone into change, who haven't understood that change is important, can also accept to, to go into change, can also accept change. So these people who are going to be rewarded and appreciated are going to make other people learn from them. Yes. That's why you see in countries the presidents give medals to entrepreneurs. Why? They are rewarding them so that they can move on like that. So that they can continue producing goods for citizens to consume. So now we need to reward the success. People who have succeeded have to be rewarded and have to be appreciated for what they have done well. So that is one of the techniques. It means the one who has not been rewarded is going to work like the one who has been rewarded. And why is, do, is he doing that or is she doing that? Because she wants she wants she also to be rewarded after some time, like how the other one was in, rewarded. So that is one of the techniques. Uh, that is one of the techniques. Then one by giving explanation. So, but why are we beginning with by? When we're answering techniques, it's like we are answering ways, the methodologies that should be applied. Ways of doing this. So that's why our answer begins with by or through. So meaning here, you have to use by or through if we are to get full marks. 
I have to continue reminding you on this because if I don't talk about it time and again, you may forget it, which is bad because I'm teaching you, you have to go and do exams. Even if you put the points the way I've put them here on your answer booklet, you will be correct. So long as you're looking at techniques, ways of fostering change. Eh? Ways of fostering, of encouraging. Ways of encouraging change. So that's why we are saying through rewarding success. Then too, by giving explanation, which can be formal or informal, by leaders to expect means when you have meetings as leaders about to change, you have to give explanation. To those people whom you are leading, you have to give explanation to the, uh, to the people who have attended the meeting. For example, if you are talking to people at some kind of meeting, you have to talk to them and give explanation, which can be formal or informal. By leaders to explain, so it means they are the leaders on this thing. They are the ones doing explanation. Why change is taking place? Why do we need change? Because now, if you come and tell me, ladies and gentlemen, we want to change from here to there. Why? You can't give the reason. It means people whom you are, tell, talk, are telling to change will not change because they have got no reason to put. They have nothing to, 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 to say about change. Why are you changing this location? People must be given a, a thorough explanation. In writing or verbally, let them have a record of what was spoken. Let something be formal, not coming and you are talking and you're just moving when you have not indeed made people understand why you are saying what you are saying. If you are changing the production of a given product to a production of another product, what does it mean? Why are you changing? Tell them that the demand for this product is not good. People are no longer demanding this product. If we can change, it means we can get more, uh, more customers. So we need to have this formal, uh, the, uh, this, this, these meetings in, uh, formally for our people who want to change to accept our change. Then we need to provide adequate training to people in order to make them meet the challenges change may bring. So people should be trained on how to overcome negative effects of change. People should be trained on how to move on with the positivity in change. So we need, uh, we need adequate training. This is one of the techniques, one of the ways. Then we have encouraging feedback on progress. Well, if you realize progress, you come and tell us how you have been progressive, how you have been progressing. If there's some kind of progress, let's, let us know, so that we can encourage other people to come in, change, and we do as the company needs us uh, to do. Then um, we have managing resistance. Of course, you can't fail to have resistance. And if there is resistance, people do not want to change. You come up. You prepare for anything one might do in order to stop change. You understand that much as you want to change, other people may not accept it, change, then prepare for this. Then by assessing readiness to measure how prepared employees and employers uh, are in order to handle changes, modifications. So for this case, understand how your people are thinking about change, how they are ready to handle change, and you need to assess, you need to find out. You as an entrepreneur, you as a proprietor. Just know that don't think, uh, you cannot, the business cannot move uh, in, in a straight line. Just know that much as may be moving in a straight line today, anything can happen. Thank you for uh, understanding what I'm teaching. We are going to pause a bit and we shall meet in the next session.